The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On your husky! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo League dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Knotted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge and justice ruled triumphant. The general store in Eagle City was crowded as Sergeant Preston strolled in with his huge dog, King, at his side. The various odors of the place always fascinated King, and they left the sergeant's side as the Molly stopped to make a purchase. Suddenly, behind a huge stack of blankets, the dog came face to face with a small boy who was also investigating on his own. Oh, oh you scared me for a minute, dog. <laughs> Gee, you're pretty near bigger than I am. Your head's as tall as mine. <laughs> Children were usually afraid of King, and he was taught to avoid them. But this young man seemed to have no fear of the huge husky. And King felt strangely pleased as the little fellow's arms went around his shaggy neck. Oh, wonderful dog. Look, I can just get my arms around your neck to hug you. Now I'll whisper something in your ear. My mom hates dogs. She won't even... Oh, oh. Somebody take this terrible animal away from my child. Help somebody. Oh, my baby. Well, what's wrong, Mrs. Arnold? Take him away. Oh, my child. That, that big dog. Well, he ain't hurting him. What is it? Save my boy. That, that animal. She's afraid of King. King. Here, fella. Come here. Sorry, lady. Oh, Donald. Baby, are you hurt? Oh, Mom, you're just silly. That dog's my friend. Well, I'm sure King wouldn't hurt him, lady. King doesn't bite people, and he's never hurt a child. Don't try and tell me anything about those brutes. They're nothing but wolves. They just as soon flash your throat as look at you. Oh, no, really, ma'am. You a mounty. You certainly ought to know better than let a brute like that run free. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, but you've got King all wrong. He's just He's a wonderful dog, and I wish I had him for my very own, and... and... You won't even let me pet him. Now, come, Donald. We're leaving. And don't ever let me see you go near one of those vicious animals again. Goodbye, dog. Goodbye, King. Huh. Fine life that kid's going to have. He's more not even letting him pet a dog. Well, in a way, she's right. All dogs aren't like King. She just hasn't learned to tell the difference. Who is she? Why, that's Mrs. Arnold, old Judge Denby's daughter. She's visiting here from Montreal. Boy's his grandson. She ain't never been in this part of the country before. He seems like a nice youngster. Young Don's love for dogs was almost an obsession. Perhaps because he was forbidden to pet or go near one, their fascination for him was doubled. Later that day, his grandfather discovered him gazing sorrowfully out of the window. A big tear just dropped off the end of his nose. Why, son, what's wrong with you? Oh! Nothing. Oh, he's been sulking all morning because I took him away from one of those big sledge dogs. He was actually hugging the thing. He, he liked me, and I liked him, and she she said he was a vicious brute, but he was so hey, now, kind. Jane, and... Why don't we stop all this? Let me get the boy up. Now, then he... Father, we've gone well, through all this before. Hmm. You spoil him terribly. Give him everything he wants, whether it's good for him or not. Hey, but, Jane, a boy and a dog just naturally go together. Like coffee and cream and ice cream and cake. I've heard all your arguments, Father. Uh, now, let's not talk about it anymore. No use, Grandpa. Get your parker on, son. Come walk down to the courthouse with me. But, Father, you have to stay there all afternoon. Donald can't wait for you. I can walk back, can I? Oh, please, Mom, let me go with him. Oh, well, all right. But come right back and put on those fur-lined boots and warm mittens. And stay Just a me. second, Grandpa. I'll be right with you. Hurry. As Donald started for home after leaving his grandfather, he saw a small sled pulled by one huge dog standing in front of the general store. The child sighed with envy as he watched the young Eskimo boy load the sled with supplies and get ready to leave. Don approached the Eskimo hesitantly. Is, is that your dog? Yes, him mine. Is, is he all yours? Huh? Uh, I mean, can you pull you on that sled whenever you want to? Yes, 
Roy, are you lucky? You got no dog? No, my mom, she hates him. You just come here. You Chechako? Ch- I don't know. Say, would you give me a ride on that sled? Me live Eskimo village, ten mile away. Must get home today. Oh. You, you never ride on dog sled? No, but I sure would like to. You want ride part way? Walk back? Oh, yes, I wouldn't mind walking back. All right. You sit back here. I ride you two, three miles. You walk back. Gee, thanks. <laughs> this where you want me to sit? Yeah, pull fur around you. <laughs> this is great. Already? Sure am. Must change. Must <laughs> To Carla, the Eskimo boy, the Yukon Territory was like an open book. Ten or fifteen mile trek was nothing, and he didn't realize the difference between himself and the young lad who was city bred. They were about five miles from town when he stopped his door. Watching! Whoa! Watching! Uh, maybe now you better go back, boy. Gee, it's been swell, Kala. Thanks. You sure are lucky to have a dog like this. Me come town again. Give you more ride. That'd be wonderful. I'm sure glad I saw you. Bye. You take trail back town. Sure. Bye. Kala and his dog were soon out of sight over the hills as Don began his homeward trek. They had covered ground quickly with Kala's dog, and he had no idea how far he was away from home. When a big snowshoe rabbit bounded out from behind a bush in front of him, he went leaping through the snow to pursue it joyfully. <laughs> hey, you rabbit, I'll get you. <laughs> the wind was rising, and the early Arctic night was descending rapidly. When Don discovered he had lost the trail he was following home. I, I was sure it was this way. Oh, I'm so cold. What shall I do? <gasps> Judge Denby was very worried. He paced the floor, waiting for Sergeant Preston, trying vainly to console his weeping daughter. When... There. That must be Sergeant Preston now. I'm all ready, Sergeant. Come in. Do you mind if I bring King in for a minute? Oh, no, no, of course not. Come in, King. Down, boy. Down there, fella. Oh, uh, this is my daughter, Mrs. Arnold, Sergeant. We met in the store this morning. How do you do? Oh, Sergeant... If you can only find Don. I have some good news for you. We know which direction he went. Where? You do? Which way? Jim Jackson saw him getting on a sled that an Eskimo boy was driving. A sled? With an Eskimo? There's an Eskimo village about ten miles north of here, and we may find him there. But, but why would he go off with an Eskimo? We'll probably want to ride on a dog sled. <laughs> dog? Again, it's a dog. If only he could forget those horrible Mrs. animals. Mrs. Arnold, we're going to have to depend on a dog to find him. Oh, what do you mean? It's dark, and we're going to have to depend a lot on King's scent and hearing. Have you something of Don's that I can show King and let him know what we're looking for? Oh, what well, is it? Sweater, if that's anything. That'll be fine. Here, King. Here, boy. Get this scent. We're going to find Don. <laughs> he seems to understand you, Sergeant. It's all routine to King. Got it, boy? We'll take the sweater with us, if you don't mind. You, you mean he'll really try to pick up Don's scent? He will pick up Don's scent if he crosses it. Ready? All ready, Sergeant. Let's go. Now, don't worry, Jane. We'll bring Dawn back. Oh, I'll try not to worry. Oh, Harry, and good luck. The northern lights splashed their color on the sky, and their glow lighted the forest dimly. With the yelp of a wolf coming closer, the boy was terror-stricken. He ran in panic to a spruce tree, and in spite of his heavy clothing, he managed to climb into its low-hanging branches. If I can just pull myself up. <laughs> so cold and... Suddenly, a gray shape glided out from the thicket and stopped beneath the tree. Donald drew up his feet in terror as he looked down at the huge gray animal beneath him. Oh, go away! <laughs> the wolf's eyes gleamed hungrily, and Don wondered if he were out of reach of its terrible fangs. His hands were growing numb with cold. I, I, I can't hang on. What is it? Has 
King found something, Sergeant? Here's where Don left the trail. He went off this way. Oh, I don't like the sound of those wolves. Let's hurry, Sergeant. I think we'd better let King go on ahead. King, here, boy, follow these tracks. Find him, fellow. Run, King. Find him, boy. As King raced over the frozen ground following Don's trail, a growl rose from his throat as another scent joined that of the boys. It was the scent of a wolf. The trail zigzagged through the forest, and the hair on King's back rose as he suddenly saw the huge beast beneath a tree. The timber wolf turned and bared his fangs. The king launched himself at his throat with a roar of defiance. Don grew numb with terror. He swayed and then fell from the branch to the ground, almost under the fighting animal. He lay close to the tree, too terrified to move while the battle raged around him. Suddenly, the growling stopped. One of the animals lay quietly in the snow. The other came slowly toward Donald. Oh, oh, you huskies! Listen, that sounds like King now. It is King. We're coming, boy. Do you, do you think he's from him, Sergeant? If I know King, he has. There he is, over near that tree. Here we are, boy. Ah, uh, King, old fellow, you found him. Dawn, I... Uh, Wait a minute. No... Wait a minute, I'll see. Yes, he's alive, Judge. Oh, Dawn, Dawn, son. Are you all right? I, I'm so cold. Please, don't take the dog away. Why, look, Sergeant. He's full of blood, his face. He's been lying close to King. King's full of it, too. Oh, I'll carry you, Dawn. We'll put you on the sled. Look here, Judge. King had a fight before we got here. A wolf. One of the biggest I've ever seen. King, King, save me. Don't take him away. King will stay right beside you all night, Donald. Here, Judge, better let me carry him. It's quite a walk back to that sled. Come on, boy. All that night, King stayed close beside Don's bed. Twice the child awoke, gasping with terror, but grew quiet when he rested his hand on the great dog's head. Don's mother looked on in amazement. What? That dog's almost human. He's so gentle. He seems to know A boy how... and a dog. They sure go together. The next morning, Preston was greeted by King as he came into Donald's bedroom. <laughs> Hello there, fella. How are you, Don? I'm fine, Sergeant. Oh, King was wonderful. He stayed beside the bed all night long. Are, are you going to take him away, Sergeant Preston? Well, I'll tell you, Don. King has his job to do. But I thought maybe we could make a trade. Here, look in this basket and see if you'll give up King for this. <laughs> a puppy! Mother, look! Oh, oh grab it! You see him? Oh, oh. <laughs> I'll bet he grows up to look just like King. Oh, he's wonderful. Mother, may I keep him? Oh, yes, Don. Oh, um, I've changed my mind about dogs. I think they're wonderful, too. Oh, gee. Yes, King, old boy. I guess your work here is done. It looks as if this case is closed. These copyrighted features originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Al Neal speaking. This is Michigan Radio Network.